Hey friends, today we're going to talk about pop art. It's one of my favorite art movements and it began in the 1960s. So, wow, more than 80 years ago. Pop art contains images that people saw in their everyday life. And even today, think of, thinking of pop art, it could be things that you see on TV, on billboard advertisements and magazines and comics. So these are examples of pop art from the 1960s. This is an old comic book cover. And this is a soup can, which is obviously Campbell's, one of the most famous brands of soup you see in the supermarket. And we're gonna talk about the artist who painted the, um, who painted this painting in a few minutes. So pop art paintings show things that we may see in our everyday life, like cartoon characters, like in this one here, we see Mickey Mouse or pop, popular brands of food or drink. Here we have Coca-Cola. The paintings contain bright colors that you would see on packaging for food or for magazine advertisements. And the reason why often the colors of pop art is, are so bright is when you think about it, you want to grab the viewer or people's attention. And that's why even for brands like soft drinks and food, you see often lots of bright colors because people, they want people to buy your product. Now we're gonna talk about probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous pop artist. And his name was Andy Warhol. And he was from the United States and he was born in 1928 and he died in 1987. When he was a young man, before he became a pop artist, he worked as an illustrator for famous fashion magazines such as Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. So here you see some fashion illustrations of shoes that he did. And then the, he did lots of illustrations of cats and he used these also um, in the magazines the magazines also used his illustrations of cats as well. And then he said, you know what? I don't wanna work for a magazine company anymore. I kinda of wanna make my own art and do my own thing. So that's what he did. So he started to paint objects that were he'd seen his daily life, mass produce objects, so objects that are made by a machine and that could, we can produce many, many, many hundreds of thousands of them, such as Coca-Cola and here Campbell's soup. So he used a technique called silk screening to make these paintings of Coca-Cola and Campbell's soup because you see it almost looks like a photograph. And by silk screening, you can get like a really hard edge and the paint, you don't, you don't even see the paint. It kind of looks like a machine made them. And that was kind of his intention. He wanted it to look like a machine. His studio was even called the factory, which is like, again, thinking of things that are mass produced. So here you see him doing his silk screen. So silk screen is, it's like a screen. You see, like you have a screen door or a screen on a window. So there's tiny little holes in it. And you create stencils. So he would place stencils on certain parts of the painting, the parts that he didn't want to add paint. So the stencil would block out certain parts. And then the parts that he wanted to add paint to, he would add, this is the ink or the paint. And then this tool that he's using is called a squeegee. And maybe if you've ever been to the gas station um, to help clean your wind, your uh, family's windshield on the car one side of um one side of the sponge is is very very wet that's the part to kind of wipe your window it looks like a sponge but if you flip it over it's like a thin piece of rubber and that's called a squeegee and you can and it was a way to push the paint down the screen as well as again when you're using it on a windshield, it's a way to get rid of all of the water because it gets rid of all the water droplets. The rubber helps push all the water away. So here he is squeegeeing out the paint 
And then when he lifts up the screen, you can see this is one of his soup cans here. It looks very, very kind of very accurate and very mass produced. If you have a t-shirt that has a logo on it, that is often a silk screening process. So you can silk screen clothing as well, like for logos or for sports teams, things like that. And here's some more of his soup cans and Coca-Cola. These he did in different bright colors. And so why did was Andy Warhol so interested in, in painting Campbell's soup? Well, he had a direct connection to it in that he had soup for lunch every day for 20 years. And as a young boy, his mom let him choose whatever soup flavor, Campbell's soup flavor he wanted. And then later on, um, he decided to do celebrity portraits. Celebrities are famous people. So these are all famous people from the 1970s, some of them even from the 1950s and 60s. This is Elvis Presley, who was a very famous rock musician of the 1950s and 60s. This is Jackie Kennedy, who was the first lady, the wife of uh, John F. Kennedy, who was one of our presidents in the 1960s. And this is a very famous actress named Marilyn Monroe, who starred in many movies in the 1950s and 60s. And then he did a series of his own self-portraits, again, kind of doing multiples using different colors. This one, he did a camouflage motif. Um, he liked, this is a wig that he was wearing, so he liked to wear these kind of wigs that kind of stuck up. Um, you can see the hair is kind of sticking straight up, and he kind of liked that style. Um, just kind of very, very artistic. And not only was he um, a very popular artist, Andy Warhol was a big collector. He loved to collect things called memorabilia, so like postcards, newspapers, photographs, anything that kind of was a reflection of the times, um, he would save. And now these are archived in a time capsule. If you go to the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I've been there a few times, they have boxes labeled with all of the things that he collected. As you see, here's Marilyn Monroe. This says President Dead, so that is John F. Kennedy because he was assassinated in the 1960s and it then also looks like old movie these are old movie star photographs he collected as well all right so we are going to um hopefully you're inspired by the pop artist andy warhol we're going to do our own pop identity portrait and that we are going to create our own soup can with that reflects our own identity. So how did the Campbell's soup reflect Andy Warhol's identity? Well, he ate Campbell's soup every day um, for lunch as a child. So he had a direct connection to it. Here's another pop artist, Roy Lichtenstein. This is his self-portrait with a white t-shirt, looks like a mirror. And this is the style of, um, that you would see, these are called Bende dots that you would see in old comics. So it's an old style of printing. So again, that is the paintings he did as a pop artist, which kind of reflects his identity portrait. So it's very different than the actual physical portrait, what you look like on the outside. It's more things on the inside that reflect your identity, things that interest you. So we're going to be doing some brainstorming today. Um, in your art kit, you have something called a word web. And what I'd like you to do is fill it out. You can put your name in the center. And then there are different categories. So this, the first one is family. So anything you want to say about your family, if you have any siblings, I was born in Ohio, so I wanted to write that since I'm not from Massachusetts. Sports, if there's any sports that you play or sports that you're interested in. If you're not interested in sports, you don't, ha you don't have to fill this out or you could just put no sports. Hobbies are things that you like to do in your spare time apart from school. 
I put painting, cooking. Another one you know I love to do is sewing. We're going to skip this one for a minute. Um, colors that you really like, I put pink and light green. If you have any pets or any animals that you really like, favorite animals, I here have one dog named Iggy. Actually, I have two dogs now, so this is an old version of this. So I have Iggy and Jack-Jack, two dogs. And then up here it says TV, film means movies that you like, TV shows, music. I put Despicable Me too, the movie. I like rock and roll music, and I like the TV show called Project Runway. Now, let's move to the two categories, the two last categories, because these are kind of important. The first one says two nouns that describe you, and we know that a noun is a person, place, or thing. So I put artist, because that is a thing that describes me. I'm a teacher, I'm a mother, and I'm a friend. You can also put something like sports fanatic, dog lover. Um, you could put baker if you really like to bake. Um, you can put daughter or son if you're, um, so those are all different kind of ideas for nouns. And then over here we have two adjectives. So those are descriptive words. What kind of words describe you? I put creative, energetic, kind, and proud. And you remember at the beginning of the year when we did that, um, that poem that um, had all kinds of adjectives that could describe you, you can also look at that poem for ideas as well, back to the, the I am poem. So I want you to think about that. All right, so that is it for today. I want you to also listen to the video because I have some other explanations on how we're going to get started on our Andy Warhol inspired soup can project. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.